If you're looking for a 42 inch OLED display, but you don't know which one to go for, you might want to hang on and have a look at the new screen from Chinese manufacturer KTC. They're launching their monitor range outside of China in key regions like the US, Europe and UK, and their G42P5 might be just what you're looking for. Let's check it out and compare it with LG's and ASUS's screens now. We're going to compare the G42P5 against established 42 inch OLED screens from both LG and ASUS, the LG 42C2 and the ASUS PG42UQ. We've got full reviews of all three screens on our main website linked in the description below, so check that out if you want lots more information. First, a quick overview of the KTC G42P5. It's a 42 inch OLED screen with a 3840 by 2160 4K resolution. It's got a 0.1 millisecond gray to gray response time. It has per pixel dimming for near infinite contrast ratio, deep blacks and excellent HDR performance. It's got an overclocked 138 Hz refresh rate and it supports adapter sync for variable refresh rates. That includes FreeSync and G-Sync support. It offers two HDMI 2.1 ports along with a display port and also a USB type C which includes 90 watt power delivery and DisplayPort alt mode. Let's cover the things that you can expect to be similar between all three screens before we get into the differences. They're all based on LG Display's WRGB subpixel layout OLED panel. So you can expect near instant response times, per pixel dimming for infinite contrast ratio, deep blacks, and excellent HDR performance without blooming and halos. KTC do use the latest WBE or EX OLED panel from LG Display. So that's different from the WBC panel that we saw on both the LG and the ASUS models when we tested them. The WBE panel supposedly has better lifespan expectancy, but that remains to be seen. I wouldn't get too hung up on the differences between the panel variations at this point in time. They're all large in size at 42 inches, so they're not gonna be for everyone, of course, but if you've decided that you've got the desk space, the office space for something this big, then this is the place to be to decide which of the three screens is gonna be right for you. All three of them have got a 3840 by 2160 4K resolution, which is actually usable on a screen this size without needing to use um, operating system scaling. You can run that comfortably at 100% and make use of the extra large desktop space that that will give you. Let's talk now about the KTC G42P5 in more detail and particularly where it's different from the LG and the ASUS models. The KTC has a sleek and attractive design we felt including a white metal rear enclosure. It looks minimalist, but attractive from the front and the back. There's an optional monitor stand as well, which we would definitely recommend getting. That's also got a white finish to the arm and has a wide sturdy metal foot to support the big screen. It's got a decent tilt adjustment range as well, much more than the very minimal tilt that we'd seen on the ASUS model, and obviously a lot more than the LG, which has no adjustments at all. It would have been nice to see height and swivel adjustments included as well from the KTC, but the stand is nevertheless very good on this screen. It also includes some attractive and pretty subtle RGB lighting in the stand. This is our favourite model actually of the three in terms of design and aesthetics. KTC have provided all the modern connectivity options you might need as well. They're all located on the left hand side of the screen behind a small removable panel for easy access. As well as having two HDMI 2.1 ports, there's one DisplayPort 1.4, which has DSC, and also one USB Type-C. The LG has only HDMI 2.1, four of them in fact, and while ASUS did add DisplayPort to their screen, which made it much more accessible for PC and Mac users, KTC have taken it a step further and added that USB Type-C. This gives you simple single cable connectivity from compatible devices with DisplayPort Alt mode data transmission and 90 watt power delivery. You do get two fewer HDMI 2.1 ports than the LG and ASUS models though, as there's only two available here, but that is likely to be plenty for a desktop monitor when you also have DisplayPort and USB-C available. KTC have also included a KVM function on the screen, which isn't available on the LG or the ASUS models. But on the flip side, it is missing picture by picture and picture in picture support those are available in one format or another on the other screens. One thing to keep in mind is that the KTC and the ASUS models both feature 
USB ports that are like you would find on your PC. So unlike the LG where the USB ports can only be used to stream content like videos and photos or whatever onto the TV, these ports act the same way as you would on a PC. The ASUS model does have four ports, so there is a better selection there, including them being on different parts of the screen, but the KTC does have two USB ports on the left-hand side, which are fairly easy access, and as I say, can act like they would if they were from a PC. The KTC screen also includes two times eight watt stereo speakers. Now these aren't as powerful or punchy as the two times 10 watt with the subwoofer that you get on the ASUS, or the higher end Dolby Atmos supported, uh, speakers that are available on the LG C2, but that of course is a TV and is designed to be used in that way. They are pretty decent, but you may want to also consider an external soundbar or maybe even using headphones or whatever for your gaming. They're gonna be offering you better sound than you get from most desktop monitors though. Two times eight watts is still pretty decent. Being aimed at the desktop monitor market, the KTC does include a PC standby mode. Now this isn't instant. When your PC goes to sleep, it takes around 60 seconds for the screen to display uh, a no input signal message before it then goes to sleep, but it will at least sleep. The LG, because it was a TV, you had to turn off manually from the remote. There were some third party applications that can help with PC support and PC sleep mode. The ASUS, on the other hand, had a very monitor-like sleep mode that was pretty much instant. So the KTC does support that, it's just a bit slower to kick in. The KTC has a matte anti-glare coating and it looks very similar to the ASUS model as a result. We talked a lot in our 42-inch OLED shootout video about the differences between the glossy screen and the matte screen. We're not gonna repeat it all here. Check out the video that's linked in the description below if you want a lot more information about that. In our opinion, the matte anti-glare coating of the KTC model is gonna be suitable for more people as a desktop monitor. It definitely has the edge in brighter and daytime lit rooms where you'd typically be using a screen like this as a monitor. If you're gonna be using the screen in a dark room for HDR and gaming, then it also has a very similar performance to the LG's glossy coating anyway. The two look basically identical. Now the LG does have a bit of an edge with its glossy coating when it comes to dim or moderately lit rooms, Blacks will look uh, deeper, they'll pop a little bit more, there's no doubt about that. But at the same time, we think that for the vast majority of people, the avoidance of reflections and the matte coating that the KTC and the ASUS models offer is gonna be preferable. That's all gonna come down to personal preference, of course. So you're gonna to have to decide at what time of day you want to be using the screen, what your lighting is like, where your windows are, where your lamps are. Overall, we think that the KTC and ASUS models will have the advantage for most people as a desktop monitor. Using the KTC for office and general applications is generally okay, but there are some OLED protection features and brightness controls that can become a little bit annoying. We should start by saying that all three screens use the exact same panel sub-pixel structure, and so text clarity and text rendering is gonna be the same on all three. On the KTC, you cannot disable the ASBL feature which detects static content and will dim the screen when it detects that from time to time. This was available to disable on the ASUS straight from the main on-screen display. You can also disable it on the LG via the service menu if you have a specific remote for that. We did find that the ASBL on the KTC model was less aggressive and less uh, obvious than on the LG by quite a way. Sometimes you will see this when you're using it for office use and any kind of static content. The screen will dim a little bit only to then brighten again a little bit later on as you move things around and as the picture changes. We have suggested to KTC that they should consider adding a mode that would allow you to disable this properly from the main menu like you can on the ASUS model. So maybe look out for that in a future firmware update. The KTC does have a much larger brightness adjustment range for SDR though, allowing you to adjust all the way from 400 nits down to a very low two nits. This allows adjustment that is significantly brighter, but also significantly darker if you need, than the LG and the ASUS models. Remember, all three screens can turn their pixels off individually, so you get true blacks and an amazing contrast ratio. The ABL function varies on each of the three screens. So this is the function that controls how bright the screen will get depending on the content being displayed. This is an inherent technical limitation of an OLED panel. So all three models feature ABL but it will behave differently on each of them. To measure this, we talk about APL. So this is average picture level, and we measure it by displaying different sized white windows 
the rest of the screen being black from a 1% white window all the way up to a 100% white window. So this allows us to see at what point the brightness of the screen is lowered depending on the overall image that's being displayed. The KTC cannot sustain the same brightness at all APLs unfortunately, which does mean that in office and general desktop use, sometimes you'll see the brightness lower as your window size changes or the content changes. This happens even at a calibrated 120 nits brightness level, but we've also included the behavior at 150 and 200 nits, which are other commonly used brightness levels. Ideally, the colored lines would be flat across the graph, showing the screen could sustain the same brightness at all APL window sizes. That's unfortunately not the case here with the KTC at the moment. The LG can sustain a calibrated 120 nits at all window sizes, that's shown by the blue line on the graph here, and shows only minor brightness drops if you're using a 150 nit or a 200 nit brightness level, and only then when the size of the APL becomes particularly high. It's therefore very rare to see the ABL kick in in real use on the LG, even for office applications. So even though the ASBL feature that detects static content is more aggressive and does kick in more often than the KTC, the ABL side of things will be less apparent. If we compare it now to the ASUS PG42UQ, you can see that on the latest firmware we tested, the screen could sustain 120 nits pretty much at all APL, but showed similar ABL dimming for 150 and 200 nit levels, and that's even for mid-sized windows. The older firmwares V23 and V28 were far worse still. However, Asus do also provide a handy uniform brightness mode, which since the version 31 firmware basically stops this from happening, and it allows you to run at anywhere up to about 200 nits without the ABL ever being needed. This does make a bigger difference to user experience for office and desktop uses, certainly compared with the non-uniform brightness mode. We've spoken to KTC about including something like this on their G42P5, and they said they're gonna look at this for a future firmware update. So that's great news. When that's available, that will really help. The LG has the edge when it comes to calibration, being able to offer better accuracy with normal software profiling, and also allowing you to hardware calibrate the screen if you've got a suitable device. Of course, all of this only really matters if you've got a calibration device and the relevant software, but if you have, then the LG is gonna offer you better flexibility and better overall accuracy than the other two models. You're probably gonna be more concerned about how the screen is out of the box and what can be achieved through a few simple on-screen display adjustments and how it's gonna be performing for general use and for general users. All three screens have a wide color gamut, and so it's gonna be best to consider the sRGB modes on each of these when we're talking about general SDR desktop office use. The LG has the most accurately calibrated gamma curve out of the box, closest to 2.2, but the KTC and ASUS models are not bad overall either. The KTC has the most accurate white point with a 0% deviance from our 6,500K target. The ASUS is a little too warm by 4%, and the LG is a bit closer, but slightly too warm by 2%. Not much in it, but the KTC has a slight edge when it comes to color temperature. All three models offer a very good emulation and clamping of the smaller sRGB color space. And there's very little to separate the three when it comes to color accuracy of sRGB colors. With a Delta E of 1.5 on the KTC, 1.9 on the ASUS and 1.3 on the LG, they're all very close. The LG has the overall edge though, as its maximum Delta E is only 2.3. All three displays offer good sRGB modes with decent color accuracy, and they should be fine for normal desktop and SDR uses. There's not really much to separate the three of them here. All three of these screens have a native 120 Hz refresh rate, with the KTC and ASUS models offering a small overclock mode to boost this up to 138 Hz. Variable refresh rates are supported via adapter sync as usual on all three. The small refresh rate boost does make a small difference to motion clarity and frame rate support. Every little helps here. It's not very much, but it can help a little bit. You can see pursuit camera photos capturing the perceived motion clarity of each screen here. Since they're all using the same OLED panel, the gray to gray response times are very similar on all three screens. All of them are below one millisecond gray to gray. We don't really need to compare those in any more detail. If you want more detail, please check out our full written reviews of all three screens that are linked in the description below. 
the KTC has the lowest input lag measured of the three models with only 0.25 milliseconds total display lag compared with one millisecond on the ASUS and 4.3 milliseconds on the LG. All of them are very low and all suitable for fast-paced gaming, but if we're being picky, then the KTC does have the edge here. The KTC and ASUS models have a few added gaming extras like crosshairs, timers, FPS counters, and black equaliser shadow detail controls, which the LG doesn't have. In case you're interested in any of these kind of controls and features, then you'd find those on the KTC and ASUS models like you would on other familiar gaming monitors. Console support is the best on the LG C2 as it's got enough HDMI bandwidth to support 4K, 120Hz, 10-bit at the full 444 chroma. It can also support HDMI VRR fully and also supports Dolby Vision Gaming. The KTC has more limited 24 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 ports, so there are some chroma drops when using 4K 120Hz to consider. Neither the ASUS or KTC models support Dolby Vision Gaming either, only HDR10. HDR is obviously a key consideration when choosing one of these three screens. The OLED panels are gonna offer you per pixel dimming, so excellent contrast ratios, deep blacks, no blooming, no halos. They're really gonna be well suited to HDR content. The LG is the only one of the three that supports more than the HDR10 standard. So that's gonna support Dolby Vision Gaming and Dolby Vision Movies, as well as HLG Hybrid Log Gamma. The KTC and the ASUS models both only support HDR10 formats. Peak brightness when each screen is configured to an appropriate color temperature close to 6500K is highest on the ASUS thanks to its added custom heatsink. That can reach about 100 nits brighter than the LG and the KTC models. The KTC and the LG are very close for peak brightness, but the LG can sustain that brightness for a larger window size, with the KTC's brightness curve dropping off a little bit earlier. It's not all about peak brightness though, as you can see differences between the three screens when you test them side by side in terms of their HDR image quality. How bright they get, how bright mid-tones look, how much the image pops. The, the three of them do look different when you compare them side by side. When we compared the ASUS side by side with the LG, the LG did look quite a bit brighter and provided a more attractive HDR experience despite the higher peak brightness capability of the ASUS. This was down to the HDR tone mapping as far as we can tell, and even more stark when we enable the dynamic tone mapping feature on the LG, a function that moves you further from the artistic intent of the content, but does make dark and mid-tones look a fair bit brighter. The LG did seem to have a more pleasing HDR experience than the ASUS in a side-by-side -side comparison. We then compared the KTC side-by-side -side with the LG as well, but found the performance to be a bit more similar between the two models. The KTC was a bit darker when the APL size was in the low to mid range, but overall the screens looked closer to one another. If you enabled the dynamic tone mapping on the LG, you do get a boost in brightness again though, which is a function not offered on either the ASUS or the KTC models. Screen coating is also gonna come into effect here when you're talking about HDR. If you're viewing any of the screens in a proper dark room, which is how HDR content is designed to be viewed, then all three screens look identical. The matte coating, the glossy coating, it doesn't matter. If you're in a dimly lit room or a moderately lit room, which is you know, potentially more likely for viewing conditions, then the glossy coating of the LG does have the slight edge. Blacks look deeper, they pop a little bit more, the contrast looks a bit deeper, whereas the matte coating on the ASUS and the KTC models does dull the contrast ratio a little bit. If you were gonna be viewing the screen in a brightly lit room or in daytime viewing conditions, you know that's not really particularly ideal for HDR content in the first place, but if you were, then the matte anti-glare coating of the KTC and the ASUS models is probably gonna be preferable. You're gonna avoid all the issues with reflections and that kind of thing that you would get on the glossy coating on the LG. So if you were to view the screen for HDR content or any content in a brightly lit room, then the KTC and the ASUS models definitely have the edge there with the matte coating. The KTC G42P5 is expected to be released across Europe, China, the US and the UK at a retail price of around 1,100 US dollars. It's available in the UK already with a stand included at around 1,160 pounds. You can check the latest pricing in the links below. So this price puts it somewhere in between the LG model, which can be had for around £950, maybe even a bit less, that's been around a lot longer, and the ASUS model, which is around £1,400 in the UK. 
So it sits somewhere in between the LG and the Asus in terms of price point. I'll leave links for you to check out the latest pricing and availability in your region in the description below, so check that out to consider the pricing of all three screens. You probably know what to expect from these screens generally anyway. The 42-inch OLED panel offers excellent performance in terms of gaming, near instant response times, deep blacks, best contrast ratio, local dimming at a per pixel level, all that great stuff that you're used to. The KTZ model has come along and added a few extra functions that I think will make it an attractive option for some users. It's very much aimed at the desktop monitor market, but adding USB-C, a KVM function and a proper decent stand have made a difference and make this a more practical option for many people. The matte anti-glare coating of the KTC is going to be more suitable for most people when you're considering the screen as a desktop monitor. We do look forward to KTC hopefully updating some of the OLED brightness behavior, the ABL function, the ASBL function. If they can fix some of those and improve some of the behavior, then that will make it even more attractive as a desktop monitor for general and office users. The LG has the edge when it comes to multimedia uses. Probably not surprising considering it's been designed as a TV. It's got wider support for HDR formats, including Dolby Vision. It's got more picture settings and controls and a generally better overall HDR performance than the other two screens. The KTC model sits in the middle when it comes to HDR performance, visually looking quite similar to the LG. The ASUS does lag behind a bit in terms of image quality and pop of HDR content, but hopefully ASUS will be able to improve that with a future firmware update. So despite the higher peak brightness capability of the screen, the HDR performance is a bit better on the other two screens. The KTC has the edge when it comes to PC gaming, with the DisplayPort and the USB Type-C port making it more accessible to a wider range of PC and Mac users. The 138Hz refresh rate gives it a small boost compared with the LG and puts it on par with the ASUS model, offering small improvements to motion clarity and frame rate support. It's also got the lowest input lag, but the console gaming support is not quite as good as on the other two models. The LG has the edge there with the Dolby Vision Gaming, the full bandwidth HDMI, the HDMI VRR support and all that kind of stuff. But for PC gaming, the KTC model does have the edge. Let us know in the comments section below which screen you'll be interested in. Let us know if you've got any questions, which screen you like the look of. If you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe for future updates, future videos. I'll see you next time.